welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. For those of you who are new here, my name is Bethany and I am a full-time coloured pencil artist. Now, last night I found a piece of work that I did back in 2015 and it is of a white tiger and I used coloured pencils and a bit of graphite on like a very smooth kind of um, satiny Bristol board that I picked up from a local art store, um, Hobbycraft, way back in the day when I didn't really know what I was doing or what mediums or what things I was going to like to do with my art. I just knew that I wanted to do art. It kind of led me a little bit down memory lane and it kind of allowed me to um, think about the ways that my art has developed and improved over the five years because I've been working recently on a snow leopard and I've been doing it on dark grey pastel matte but I still use coloured pencils but it's quite, been quite interesting to see that sort of like the development between back in 2015 when I very first started to where I am at now and I just wanted to share some of those tips with you today as to you know, how my artwork has improved and how you can improve your artwork too. So my top tips for developing your art and taking it to the next level. So the first point I've got is find your medium. Now, what medium that you do you really really like and I know it can be a bit of a minefield because there's so many out there whether it's oil paints whether it's pastels whether it's colored pencils whether it's you know acrylic gouache watercolor there are so many different mediums out there and I think it's, it definitely depends on the style of artwork that you're interested in so for me for example I like the structure I love the realism I like the control of kind of pencils but some people find watercolors are much more fluid and they like you know getting the job done much quicker than someone who say with colored pencil because obviously colored pencil is such a slow medium to work with because it takes so much time to develop and sort of build a piece up and I think one one really good way of finding out what you're interested in is just by seeing the style of artwork that you like. So for example, are you interested in abstract art? If you, are you interested in realism, sort of coloured pencil work, whether you're interested in, in the fine detail of pet portraiture and hyperrealism, you know, what are you interested in? And then from there you can kind of narrow down and eliminate some of your the mediums that of of preference basically um, and I know obviously in an ideal world we'd all go out to our art, local art store we buy all the mediums all the canvas all the surfaces and canvases and paper and we just try everything and we spend six months developing different skills but that's not practical and that's very expensive and a lot of us don't have that source of income or that much time on our hands so we almost got to make a decision first. So for me, for example, I really like the controller colour pencils. I loved the uh, like the effect that you can get. I love the different techniques. I liked the process of getting cosy in a studio and just drawing. I found that just therapeutic. It was almost like a safe space for me just to come in here and just shut that door and step away and just focus on what I wanted to do. And obviously I work in a very small room. This is a spare room and I don't really have a lot of space for big canvases and paint so for me coloured pencils was just what suited me not only my art style but also my environment and my circumstances um so you know and i think one way that you can definitely find the style that works for you is uh, as i said what are you attracted to so maybe go on social media what is the uh, kind of artwork that inspires you to pick up a pencil or a paintbrush what which artists do you look at and think I really like their style and I think that's a really really good way for you to kind of narrow down and eliminate the sort of um, how you want to work now obviously if you like the sort of work that I do then you know you've got the option of doing it in pastels and colour or coloured pencils and they're sort of two very similar mediums when you break them down you know you can work with pastel pencils or you can work with colour pencils now for me I've always gone with colour pencils because I really like the cleanliness of them they're very clean they're not smudgy um, or not as smudgy as pastels and you know I do I do like using pastels but they are just a bit of a minefield compared to coloured pencil so for me I've narrowed it down over the years I've as I said I spent like hundreds if not thousands of pounds over the years getting lots and lots of different um, oil paints and pastels and coloured pencils and I've always come back to coloured pencil because it's a thing that I can just understand it just resonates with me it clicks with me and I just get it so you know I think for you it would be really really a good idea if you are on a budget to find a medium that you are suited to and just try and stick to that and you can always make it a little bit easier for yourself too say for example you don't want to splash out and get a 
a whole set of Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, which are the brand that I would always recommend beginners starting with, or anyone new to colour pencils starting with, because they are quite affordable and they're a great quality pencil. But if you can't afford that, the full set of 120, which I think retails out at about £176, I think, on Amazon, around about £180 point. Um, Bitches, I know is a lot of money. So the first thing that I would kind of recommend people doing is just do what I did, which is just get the white pencil, get a, you know, pick your, your tonal value, so get your greys. So for example, I got all my warm greys, so I got um, from white to warm grey, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, dark sepia and black and that is how I started to build up my coloured pencil collection. Now I've got three different brands, I've got the Faber-Castell Polychromos, I've got the Caran d'Ache Luminance and I've got the Caran d'Ache Pablos. So you know I've got about 500 different colours but that's taken me five years to build up that collection. You can do beautiful work with very very limited colours. Um, so as I said I think I started out with like six or seven pencils and my grayscale work was absolutely fine. I would say Find, your, find the thing that you're attracted to, the medium that suits you, and do your research as well. I think, you know, a lot of us can waste a lot of money on buying cheap equipment that's not really good and we don't really like the quality of it. So one thing that I would recommend doing is just research what your favourite art is, what artists inspire you, see the way that they're working and then find the mediums that work well for them or the surfaces maybe. So I knew that the artists I looked up to were using a hot press watercolour paper and they were also using a range of different pencils. So over time I invested and instead of buying say five different cheaper um, art pads or drawing pads I went out and bought the uh, Fabriana Artistica hot press watercolour paper sheets and I got the heaviest weight and I just thought right okay I'm just going to invest a little bit more money instead of buying as I said like lots and lots of different um, drawing pads and I'm just going to just try and see how I can how I can use this paper and I think the other thing when you when you have invested and you've got a more expensive um, drawing paper you'll be less inclined to quickly rush through your work which is the, coming on to the next point that I've got which is you've really if you want to develop your skill you have to slow everything down and I know that sounds really silly because you're kind of, you know there's a whole starving artist mentality where we just want to rush and get all this work out and do this commission after commission after commission but if you're doing that you know, you're never going to really sort of improve your skill you're never going to really improve your artwork you will over time but the one way that you can quickly improve your art skills i think and the, the thing that worked for me is i really really slowed everything down so i did my research i found the reasons why i was so inspired by the people that i looked up to what was it about their work that i really liked was it the detail was it how they captured their lights and their darks was it, was it you know there were so many different things that I really admired about the artists that I looked up to when I was trying to start my art career. And I think it was really, really important for me to take a bit of time out and realise why I like their work and how I can kind of incorporate that into my artwork today. So when I had invested and got this, um, this more expensive surface to work on, I it was at the same time. Now, if you watched my previous video, which was about the biggest mistake I've made as an artist, you'll be well aware that I was in a bit of a financial crisis when after about a year and a half into my art business and I slumped massively. I had no confidence in the work that I produced. I had absolutely no self-esteem. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know how I was going to make any money. I had all these uh, hundreds of prints that around me, spent thousands of pounds and I had no idea how I was going to market them. But I knew that I wanted to draw and I knew that wasn't going to get to me and I was going to rise above it and I was going to almost like come back stronger. Um, and so I thought, right, okay, instead of me wasting any more money, churning out quickly pieces of work, which is what I was doing for the print company before, I thought, right, I'm going to really try and slow things down. Now, I will say I was working at a pub alongside this time, so I was really sort of, um, I, I had an income, so to speak, and, you know, I wasn't under time management for bills and I, you know, I had, I had extra money coming in. Um, so I can afford to take that time to develop the skill. So I had invested and got a, quite a lot of pencils by this point and um, I'd use all my sort of wages from the part-time job to invest and get more and more. So I bought my current Dutch Luminance pencils at this point as well. So I had my full set of polychromos, which I built up over time and then I'd invested and got the current Dutch Luminance. 
and I had the, as I said, the Fabriol Now Artistico Hot Press watercolour paper. And it was at the same time of the Rio Olympics and Charlotte Dujardin and her horse Vallegre had just won the gold medal and broken the world record for dressage. And um, obviously they are, I've always been a fan of dressage and I was really inspired to draw Vallegre. So I found a reference photo online. I got in touch with the photographer, he let me use it. Um, and I thought, kind of thought to myself, okay, you've got a month without any commissions or you've got a month now where you can really, really try and take your time over a piece, you're not in any rush, you, you know, just try and slow things down and just see how good you can make a piece of artwork. So build your layers slowly, really make your dark stuck. And, and, and just, develop, just just see how you can do it compared to really rushing through things. So as I said, I was in a slump at this point and I didn't want to share the work on social media because I was so scared of the reaction of people on social media. Um, and I was just in such a weird mindset. But one thing that really, really helped was by sort of developing that skill, taking the time and it, it, it definitely built confidence because I could definitely see a vast improvement just by slowing down and using a different sort of more professional grade um, medium and, and surface. I think I'd done half of Allegro's body, I'd done his back end, I'd done his tail and I think I'd done Charlotte's leg and I decided I was going to be brave and I was going to post it all on social media. And the reaction I got was overwhelming and not only that, Charlotte herself saw it on, on Facebook and messaged me and invited me to go and meet her when the drawing was done and meet the horses. And I've worked with Team GB ever since. Now, if I hadn't started and slowed down and invested and got better quality materials, I wouldn't have been able to achieve and, and work with who I work with now. So obviously that did give me a lot more confidence, but it's only when I slow things down, I really understand the capabilities of that medium. So just rushing things really, really quickly. You'll always see me work with a spare sheet of paper next to me, a Fabriana or whatever surface I'm working on, just so I can play with colors, so I can see how colors are gonna lay down before I commit to putting them on the paper. Um, so there was, you know, you've got to give yourself time to experiment. You've got to also give yourself a space to make mistakes. Mistakes are so important when it comes to um, developing your art. You can't expect to be perfect overnight. And you can't expect not to make mistakes. Five years of being a profession, professional artist, I still make mistakes all the time. Um, but it's just you learn ways, and you you don't you not. I'm not scared of mistakes anymore. In fact, I almost embrace them. I think and this is a learning opportunity rather than seeing it as a mistake. So the next thing I would say is you've got to understand your values and your light sources. So say for example, you, you're looking at a reference photo of a dog and you're going to draw a dog. The dog is could have, you know, if it's if it's outside, it's got sunlight in its eyes. It's going to have a little bit of like a white sort of reflection of that, of the bright light. Like for example, you'll see me, I've got a ring light in front of me, I've got softbox lights as well. And I'll have sort of like a bit of like a, almost like a white section, which is where the, the light is sort of reflecting. Um, so that is my light source. And you'll see on my face, the lightest part, you know, will probably be, I don't know, cause I can't really see myself. Um, but if, for example, if you are drawing a dog, the lightest part will be over its nose and, you know, you really all around its muzzle because it's the bit that's going to be further forward and going underneath the eyes, it's going to be darker and the ears are going to be a bit darker, but the top of the ears will have a bit of light. So you just need to get used to all that the light source and see where the light is coming from and get used to drawing things you know making sure your lights are really light and making sure your darks are really dark i would say understanding your light is probably more important than you getting all your detail in because when you see a fantastic piece of work on instagram for example the thing I guarantee that will attract you to that piece of work is you'll say, wow, that looks realistic because the light is light and the darks are dark. And then when you zoom in and you'll say, oh, actually it's quite realistic. But the thing that automatically captures your eye is how dark and light a piece is. So the, if, you're, if an artwork looks a little bit flat, it's probably because you're not making your darks dark enough and your lights light enough. You really need to almost vamp up that contrast. So even if you went into, when you're using a reference photo, you went into editor and you just toned down the light a little bit and it just gave you an insight of how dark that, you know, you can make your darks and the image will still look relatively the same. So you've really got to get an, an understanding for light and also your values and making sure that your darks are dark and your lights are light.
The next thing I would say is with especially with, actually with any medium you're working with is, is layers. Layers are your best friend, especially with coloured pencil. So when I'm working with coloured pencils, I always start with a base layer. So it's usually the lightest colour that I can see in the reference photo. And then I'll slowly build up. Um, I'll use a surface that I know can take a lot of media layers, whether it's pastel matte or whether it's um, Fabriano Artistico, and I will slowly build up those layers, and I will probably put 10 possibly layers down a pencil between, sort of like 5 and 10 layers, depending on the, the depth and that I'm trying to go for. So you say it's a black dog, I will put lots and lots of layers down of like different greys and maybe some purples, maybe some blues, and it's that, it's all of those layers that are going to be you know, create the over like the overriding effect of a 3D piece of work or a realistic piece of work. So you really need to spend time with working your layers. Now if you're working with oil paints and you decide oil paints is going to be your medium, then you can work dark to light. So you make sure that you're putting your darks down first and you're making them dark enough and then you're spending time. You're not just putting a black down and then you're going over the white. You know you because if you think about the amount of um when you look at a reference photo of say, if we're going to say a horse for example, the hair won't be just one colour, it's going to have lots and lots of colours and over the sort of like the, the very tip of the, the top of the layer of the coat is going to have the, the lightest part, the lightest hairs. So you really need to almost like build your layers so you're going to start dark and you're going to work up to your light. Um, so that can take sort of five, seven, eight layers of paint maybe. With your working colour pencils you're going to start with your highlights and then you've got to work backwards and put your darkest layers down dark last. So you're almost drawing back to front so you're creating your highlights first and then putting in your shadows at the end. And the last thing I would say, the last tip that I have for improving your artwork, draw exactly what you see, not what you think you see. Now when I, very, when I first started you'll see um, with the piece that I showed you of my white tiger, um, I, the hair isn't clumpy, it's very stringy almost, it's very sort of just, I've just drawn the hairs like that, I had no concept of layers, um, and if you're working on a surface like I was, it doesn't really allow a lot of layers, then that is your only option, but when you're working on a thicker surface that takes the layers, then you know, you can really put a base layer down, which would just give you almost like, the, imagine the base layer being like the skin of the animal, so whether that, especially with your working with coloured pencils, you can create almost like, uh, you're trying to smooth out the of the paper with, with the coloured pencil, and then you're going to go in with your with your sort of hairs, and you build up the hairs and build them up and build them up with lots of different colours. When you're working and you're trying to draw something that's realistic, the thing that won't make it look realistic is when you are drawing things as you think you see them rather than actually how you see them. So your brain can easily get carried away with fur and you'll just draw lots and lots of hair. Whereas fur tends to not just be like like, like that and lots of different um, hair strokes. It tends to be in clumps just like hair. You know, you can draw hair in clumps. You won't see every single individual hair when you're looking at a photo. You'll see the hair, that some bits are darker, some bits are lighter, and you know, but it's almost like clumped together. You'll have dark areas and you'll have sort of highlighted areas. And you need to try and draw them as that. So you're drawing them in sort of shapes rather than in stringy hairs. And I think that's definitely something that is really, really important to making your work look realistic. Is also, you know, forget the detail so much and draw, make sure your darks are dark enough and make sure you're drawing shapes and I think that will definitely help. If you really struggle with drawing shapes and developing your work in that way, is one tip that I've got would be turn your um, turn the piece you're working on upside down because it will throw your brain completely or just turn it on its side because your brain won't be able to just get, car get carried away with drawing fur. You'll really have to look at the shapes, look at the clumps, look at how the fur is layered and it would just give you a different perspective and it would definitely really help you. When I get a bit carried away, it's definitely something that I would do. I would turn the, the portrait upside down, turn my iPad upside down and then go from there and it definitely does help me massively. So those off the top of my head are sort of like the tips that I've got for developing and improving your art. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, it's just some tips that I've kind of established and, um, and you know I can look at over the years and think, okay, my art has changed so much over five years. These are some of the things that I've learned. And as you know, I want to be able to share my knowledge and um, that with you guys. So I hope you found it useful and um, I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye.